So here we go. First round of the top eight stim hack league. Number one seed, myself, will be taking on E Blum, B Bloom, Blum, Bloom, whatever. Um, so he's going to be playing Andy. I got a sweep so he can hand with a um, C source. That seems an exceptional start here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and keep this and get things rolling. If I could draw into some scorches here, that would be pretty fantastic. Um, so let's see what we draw into. Eli's good start. So let's get that hard ETR on HQ. Um, we'll get this here for now. And then let's go ahead and hit that sweep sweep. <clears throat> sweep sweep is such a great start against Andy. Especially if I'm going to try and trace and kill him. And I'm, I'm um, actually, one of the reasons why I'm playing this Scorch deck is because he has not seen me play this deck. Um, I've played against him and other... Oh wow, here he comes. Let's see. Maybe he'll just go tag me the whole game. That would be pretty awesome. So, <clears throat> we're going to lose a little bit of that early siphon advantage, or uh, sweep sweep advantage, but he might just want to go ahead and ride tags the rest of the game, which I'm honestly perfectly okay with. So, um, in light of the Corroder turn one, I'm going to put the Eli up there. just to give myself a little bit more protection against another Siphon. And I can double pop up R&D, which will be really annoying for him. So, um, I'm not sure if he's playing Sneak Door or Beta or not. I can't remember. Um, so, let's see. How much do I want to slow him down? Quite honestly, um, in, you know, generally I might not want to res a lot of ice um, in these situations, especially if he's got that corroder. Now he knows when and when not he can, or when he can and cannot siphon me. However, um, pretty much with this deck, I'm not really building a lot of putting really any ice in remotes. Hardly ever. Um, occasionally I will if I have like some decent scoring windows, but. Um, I'm going to be okay probably if I just get like a quandary up there or an enigma later on. And so far he has not cleared tags. Be interesting to see if that's in his plans. Certainly if he sees a scorched, if he accesses a scorched earth, he's going to clear tags. Oh, there he goes. Okay. So now we got to play the money game with him. That's a good start. I'm um, going to go ahead and do this. And then just credit up. My guess is he's probably going to want to start running R&D here. Um, <clears throat> next piece of ice, I'll probably just triple up HQ to make it inefficient and or impossible to siphon me. And this is great. We're going to suck his credits out. Meanwhile, giving myself a chance to start building my credit pool. I've um, only seen that one NAPD in hand, so for him to start accessing agendas wouldn't be unreasonable. But, um, so, I have three Scorches in the deck. My two C-sources are in hand, so I don't have to worry about him seeing C-source, at least in R&D. Um, if he starts running my hand, he's likely to see one, which would give him a lot of information. And at some point, 
uh, with the two C sources in hand, at some point it might be worth me just going ahead and, and nuking like that Mr. Lee. Put a tag on him and then hit Mr. Lee. The only problem with that is that it's going to let him know that's um, that's what I have, that I'm playing C source. So um, I'm not going to play that hedge fund, actually. I'm going to keep myself at six credits if I can. Because he just played that same old thing. And that is going to be my protection if he wants to come siphon me. Is I have all six credits to res my sand sand right now. So let's see if he go, goes ahead and, and does that. Um, it would either cost him five credits or two clicks and a credit to siphon me. It looks like he's not going to do that quite yet. He probably is realizing that I'm on six credits um, intentionally, so maybe he's just waiting on the siphon. Or he feels like he wants to get some other pieces in place before he does that. Um, <clears throat> I think Jackson Howard would be a really nice draw for me because, well, there's Astro. So I'll probably go ahead and try to, oh, first Scorched. That is excellent. So I draw an Astro and a Scorched Earth this turn. So that's like almost exactly what I want because um, unless he trashes this Sand Sand, um, that's going to be my window to um, score this Astro script, and then that's going to really put the pressure on him to start running. And hopefully I can draw it into another Scorched and seal this game. I also have two snares, so it's very possible he could run R&D and, and run into a snare. Although, um, <clears throat> I'm sure he's probably desperately looking for Desperado, no pun intended. Um, so that he can start making some money on these runs, because that's that's that really sucks, uh, especially if you got to run two pop-ups, and I gain two, and then he doesn't even get that one credit back. So that's probably why we've seen him so aggressively using Mr. Lee. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. I don't suspect he'll... Just play a Plascrete out of context unless he sees one of my power cards. So, so far I think I'm in a pretty decent position here. Um, but it's early and 0-0, zero, zero, so obviously anyone's game still. But um, if he ever drops be beneath three cards, or beneath four cards... I think that'll probably just be game, unless he can save himself a boatload of money somehow. Sort of wishing I hadn't taken Freelancer out of the deck after seeing his, his resources here. I could see Source and then Mr. Lee, uh, did Freelance, Mr. Lee and Katie, that would be pretty amazing. But I took it out, so I guess that won't be happening. So there he gets the Desperado. Now he's going to come trash this. And that's going to prevent um, me being able to res it on Siphon. Yeah, you can't... I think he was... Did he have enough money to do that? Uh, let's see. Pick, no, he can't. He can't do that. So... He's either going to have to run it again and trash it, or leave it. Here it comes. And he's on three cards, so game over. So 
going to go ahead and leave myself plenty of room here. And, yep, he did not see this coming, folks. And there it is. Game over. So, um, I think I I think I played it right in terms of the right deck here. Um, I mean, of course, I'm a little lucky to have the combo, etc. Um, but um, we got what we wanted. We got him on three cards. I think he did not suspect that. Um, and there you go. So. A win is a win, whether it's a flat line or um, agenda points. And this is honestly one of the biggest reasons why I'm considering it for Worlds is because easy wins like this are just... Um, <clears throat> they're, they're big um, relief in a tournament where you have a really long tournament and if you can get a quick win like this, it's, uh, it's a lot of pressure release. So... Um, they might not be as effective in the later rounds, um, the Elims, it's possible, um, when you're playing game to game like that, they might, you know, or maybe they've scouted you out already, or you've played them once before, so that could be a hindrance for playing it for Worlds, but, uh, certainly this game, I think it was the right choice. Um, and so we move on in the, uh, in the winner's bracket. Um, I think I'm going to be playing B9 88, who um, I know is a great player. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. Uh, hopefully, we'll get another game recorded next time through. And there you go. Over and out.